Good morning, it's Victoria from Victoria Makes. Today I'm talking about decluttering again because it's the new year of course and it's always time when you look at things. I've been really good the last year, I've not actually been buying that much at all, I've been trying to be very mindful of my purchases. But I've still got more than I really need in the house and there's lots of things in cupboards that I need to address and I do feel the importance of doing things in the small bites so you don't feel overwhelmed because that puts you off even starting and then you're not successful of course are you? So I've actually wrote a few notes on this um, to talk about it I want to show you a couple of things that I've been doing and I'm working on and um, hopefully it'll inspire you to do the same if that's the position that you're in as well. I'm also going to go through the theories about hoarding and the reasons why some of us may actually hold on to things or buy more than we actually need as well. And I want to actually talk about ways to reduce that, what solutions there are and also how to actually look at what you're purchasing and why you're purchasing that which will increase your stash and your stuff. So be mindful when you're actually going out shopping. It can also help you along the way so you're not purchasing more than you maybe need to. So I've sort of wrote down on my paper um, the following. Do you want it or do you need it? So that's two questions that you could ask yourself which I think is really good when you're in the shop to have something at the back of your mind that you question yourself before you actually purchase something. Because if you've got that, it may actually convince you whether you do need it or you want it. Those sort of things then will actually have a bearing on whether you purchase it. If the, the answer is you want it, then ask yourself why do you want it? You know, is it got a decorative purpose? Is it something that's going to, in your opinion, make your room space life any better? Is it worth the price that you're paying? If you've got an attachment to an item, and this generally is items that are already in the home, what you are decluttering, not what you are purchasing in store or online, then that's a whole different area, isn't it? Because often we all have things that we are attached to, possibly for sentimental reasons. Generally, somebody's given something to us as a gift, etc., and we don't want to get rid of it. It may be a gift that's not really wanted, we don't really like it, but we want to hold on to it because somebody special has given it us and we feel like that we need to keep it. Th those sort of things and those issues are more harder to actually resolve. When you're going out shopping, if you're online shopping, ask yourself if you need that item or you want it. If you need it and there's a purpose why that will solve a problem that you have, that's a good idea to purchase something. Because, for example, you have a wall that needs painting, it's looking shabby, then you're going to need to buy some paint to do that job, which will resolve that issue and that will be an investment and you could purchase. But if you just want something, because it might look good on a cupboard, for example, you've already got three or four items, then, you know, do you really want to buy that item? If you do, and it's going to be brought into the house, then we've got things that we can do further along the line to actually maybe look at the items that we've got in the house, if that's going to replace something, to then get rid of something, you bring something in, you take something out of the house and then you're keeping that number. You're not taking it down, but you're not increasing it, which is the main thing, and that's what we're trying to do. So buying things that you need is generally solving a problem, and that is something often that we have to do, you know, and so we have to make room for that item until it's used to resolve a problem. But sometimes we we'll buy lots of things to resolve problems, and we put them away, and then we never actually use them, and we never resolve the problem. So then you've got to question those items if you've had them quite some time, if you're going to get on with it or you're never going to get around to doing it, then it's time to move that on as well. So, you know, there's questions about each item. It can be very overwhelming and what we're going to do is take it down to a small little jobs so that you don't get overwhelmed with this. So it's kind of being proactive and very mindful about all your stuff, 
what you're going to do with that stuff to make it work for you. You can actually put a time plan in for that stuff. As I said, put it in the calendar, put it in the diary. If you need a trace person to come and do whatever they need to do with that item to resolve the problem that you have, get that booked in, plan it in that it's going to happen and that way you know that you're going to actually resolve that and you can put a tick against that and that will be done. So I'm going to show you one of my rooms now that I need sorting out. My husband's tried to sort it out for me and he's um, tidied it up for me a little bit but I want to show you what it looks like and we'll have a little chat about what we, what's in there and what I'm going to do with it because this is a, a nice example. Okay, so come along with me. I've got lots and lots of cupboards and things that I need to go through. But as I said before, let's do it bit by bit so it doesn't overwhelm us because otherwise, you know, it just does. It gets overwhelming and then you put the job off and then again, six months down the line, you're in the same problem, aren't you? All right, so let's have a look at this room. Right, so this is the washing machine room. Okay, lots and lots of paint. We've got all sorts of bits and bobs, I'll just put it around. Maybe a bit of order going off there. And then we've got bags, shopping bags, extra things like the hangers for our clothes, bubble wrap, wax machine, brush and shovel, etc. Got some bits and bobs on here. This is just like a storage where we put stuff. So. Going back to jobs in hand, I've got all these, and I managed to get these quite cheap recently. And these are for painting projects I've got. Extra bits of tins of paint to replace and renew chipped paint off doors, etc. And skirting boards and things like that to match what's currently there. Books, and we've got seeds and all the washing. A few little candlesticks that I'm not using. Okay, these boxes here have got things in them. I'm keeping and lots and lots of bags, lots of stuff up on the top shelf. So the question could be is do we need all these? Do we need every one of those? You know, are they still in good condition? You know, this is quite old, very rusty tin. Is it still adequate? Will it work? Etc. You know, so go through everything and see if you can reduce it. These are projects that I want to do but I haven't done them yet but will I definitely be doing them that's the question you know all these things have got to be addressed all these will go through them and see if we need them all if we if they're no good we'll throw some nothing really to recycle of course um this up here is going to go to the recycling because I bought that and it's the wrong size so I'll send that to a charity shop that's fine um, and just clear it off. So what I'll do is I'll take it all out and then go through everything and ask myself if I really need this or not. Because we've all got rooms like this, haven't we? Now this was a very hard room as well because this is a storage under the stair storage and in it I had lots and lots of flowers, I've got lots of wallpaper, okay? These are china in boxes and more wallpaper and that is it and what i did is i took all the flowers out and i got rid of what i didn't need and they're going to the charity shop and then the wallpaper i'm going to use these i think as gift wrap now for people and i've put my other wallpaper that i haven't used yet which is a job in progress hopefully coming up this year and this is china plates and things which i need to keep so with that room with the paint and everything in it, you know, there's quite a lot of things I've gone to ask myself about that. All the paint, is it a maybe project or have I got a time plan? Is that project going to happen? If not, place that in my diary as a maybe in the future, a month or two, whenever you know you've got time, to do that project with that paint or with that item so that it will get used up and decide maybe you don't want to get it done at all and then you can donate and get rid of those items if in a couple of months that you've still not done it. You know, because we all change our minds, don't we? And we see things and then things change, we don't want to do it anymore or you might not even like the paint colour anymore. Give yourself a bit of time if you wish 
but put it to one side to highlight the fact that that item needs to be moved on if you don't get anything done with it in a month or so. You could find some room outside. So we've got an outdoor shed, so it might be better just to try and find some room outside for the, all those paints if I'm not going to be doing it. If it's to top up projects like doors or skirting boards that won't be done probably you know for six, seven months or even a year, but you've got a special colour that you need to keep it so that you can top up if there's any sort of damage to woodwork or whatever, you know, because a lot of these paint colours, they change the shades and you don't have them and they're obsolete, so you might need to keep those, obviously, so that's good. But can you relocate that item? You know, can you put it outside? You know, it's not in the way inside, so you could relocate. It's an alternative, but don't just move stuff outside or into another room because all you're doing is moving from A to B you need to make sure that you've got a solution for it and that you're going to definitely use it um, if not moving it from A to B B is going to be the donation charity thrift shop you know not your other room you've got to make those decisions haven't you also look at storage how it's being stored is there more manageable storage solution that you could use for example I showed you in the washing machine room I've got lots of little tins of paint tester pot on the windowsill that you'll have seen. I could get some kind of wooden or fabric storage box that I could put them in all together which might look neater and label it and it could be sort of stacked on top of each other with different things on so that when you go into a room or a cupboard everything is in more manageable storage boxes and they look neater etc and then you just go to the box that you require and pull it out etc so you know it's that would be a tidy option wouldn't it it's more of a manageable solution i think we've also got to uh, factor in your personal household income because if you have amassed lots of things which are useful and can be useful in the future you don't want to be getting rid of everything if you can't really afford to replace it if you need it later down the line so you know you've bought those items if you haven't got a lot of money you're not going to want to just get rid of them because in six months you might need to buy them again your income will have a bearing on these things i think sometimes you've got to question that and also if you purchase something that's very expensive and you know that you probably won't really be able to afford to buy that item again in the future you're not going to be quick to give it away for example kitchen appliances it's known that lots and lots of houses have got cupboards full of unwanted kitchen appliance purchases you may have bought a pasta making machine or a waffle machine for example and it gets used at first you know and then it's put away at the back of the kitchen cupboard and never used but it's taken up room that and many i mean some people have got quite a lot of these appliances which you just don't want do you and so why not just get rid of them but you could try selling them if you've got a fabulous expensive coffee machine or KitchenAid food mixer but you don't really bake you're not using it very much it's taking up workspace and you're not using it really ever at all what is the point of putting it in the cupboard if you're not using it if you need to retrieve some of the cost of that because it's an expensive item then you can put it on a selling platform online and sell it that way you'll retrieve some of the money back and it won't feel like such a financial loss to yourself if you're getting some money back which can be used to buy something else treat yourself so always consider that so i wrote down on my piece of paper now and i'm going to read this off to you a list of what I think is important for decluttering and yesterday I went through a wardrobe and tried to do some decluttering of clothes etc because I think that's where ladies often struggle with clothes don't we we, we tend to have probably too many uh, or shoes or handbags or whatever so that's always a good place to declutter as well I could see when I open my wardrobe doors that the rail it is bowing slightly you know with the weight of of clothes and everything. A, a one isn't it? You know, I'd rather get rid of a few things than have a broken wardrobe rail. So I wrote this down and I thought this was quite useful. So I've got making a list of all the areas you want to clear and refresh. Now it's very important. I know that all through the house there are areas that I want to clean and refresh and get rid of a few things. And the thought of all that probably overwhelms me. 
So the best thing to do is to, to do it in bite-sized chunks, isn't it? So if you're feeling energetic, you're feeling up for a challenge, then if you wrote a list at night time or whenever you haven't got a lot of energy, but of all the things that are troubling you, you know, all the areas that probably are a little bit too untidy, then one morning or afternoon when you're full of energy, you can start on that list, can't you? So make a list of all the areas you want to clear and refresh. Only do one area at a time. No matter how much energy you've got, when you start doing your decluttering, if you're going to do it right, you know, it's going to take some time, it's going to take lots of energy, it's going to give you lots of great results and it'll be worth every moment spent on that project. But only do it a little at a time. You're going to get better at it. You're going to learn how, what's working, what's not working for you. And you'll get into kind of a routine, etc. So my top tip is to start small in an area or a cupboard. It's because it's easy to overwhelm yourself and you can get into that habit and then get on with it with the large areas. When you know what you want to do and what's working for you, the first few projects hopefully will motivate you to tackle the, all the big ones for later date. My tip is, when you're looking at something, the time and the regularity that you use that item and the time being is when you've last used that item should be the deciding factor that you then look at. So if you haven't used it for a long, long time or you don't use it very often, then that should flag it up as being something that you'll consider getting rid of. So if you only keep addressing your wardrobe for one day that you might actually slim down and fit into that item, then again, that's flagging it up that really, you know, if you've not slimmed down for in two years and you, you've had it for four years in the hope that you're going to slim down, I'd move it on, you know. When you slim down, you'll go out and find a whole new wardrobe that look fantastic. As simple as that. Or box it up and put it somewhere because we'll go on to that after. Keep the items that you regularly use, like I said, only allowing yourself a couple of things that are for special one-off occasions. For example, I've got a red outfit that I only wear on Christmas day every year. Now you could say, well, you're not using that very regularly, so that should be an item to get rid of. And theoretically it should, but that item is my Christmas day outfit. So I make allowances for that. I don't have it hanging up in the wardrobe all year round. I just fold it up and I put it in the drawer so that it's not taking up the wardrobe space. It is taking up some space in the drawers, obviously, but it's something that I do wear. And I wear regularly, but it's only once a year. But because we've all got that up in here, and this is the reason to declutter, to reduce that volume, because you don't need lots of items like that that we only use rarely. One that I've just already mentioned is something that you're attached to, it costs you a lot of money, so you want to hold on to it. And let me put it this way, if you're not using it very much and you're only attached to it because it costs you a lot of money, try selling it and so you'll get some benefit back from it. That will help reduce the loss, if you like, by getting a reward back for selling that item. Things to appreciate, you know, obviously. And so if you can just sell it and get something back, that's the sort of thing I would encourage to be sold. A lot of things just donate and help uh, your local charity thrift shops. But if you can sell, you know, expensive things, I'd really regularly do that. And there's lots of selling platforms that you can use um, whichever country you're in. Clearing out your cupboards and donating them onto the charity shop. They will be very, very happy to accept your items. When you're looking at an item also, ask yourself how often in the last year did I use that item? And that will help you again. So, as I said before, make a list of all the items and go through all these sort of questions. Question yourself why you need it, if it's only something that you want, how often have you used it? Do you think you really need it? Was it expensive? Can you resell it? Will you, are you happy to donate it? By not having it anymore, will it be a problem? If it is a problem, can you solve it cheaply if that problem ever came again? Because it might not. So, you know, ask lots of questions. If you have a bag, and I've got a big bag here that I'm trying to fill to go to the charity shop, I'll show you in a moment. 
notes, I put everything in there. If it's something that's got a question mark in that you think you might need in the future, then get another box, storage box, and pop those items separately in a box. And then put those away, and then in about another month, come back to that box and go through all those questions again, to, and then put them in the donation box, sell the item, or keep it back in the box. And what's that allowing you to do is to give you a little bit more time on things that you're a little bit unsure about and you don't want to get rid of just now because in the past I've got rid of lots and lots of things and then five or six months later gone back looking for them and realised I've got rid of them, they've been quite hasty. And that's okay because most of the things you can do without, but some things it's annoying when you actually could have used it. So you might have a maybe box. And that's a box where you don't want to get rid of it right now, this minute, because it could well be useful. And like I say, get it in your diary to use it up next month or in two months or three months. But if you can't foresee that happening in a month or two, put it in a maybe box and hold it for a little bit longer, that's fine. Because by getting rid of loads of stuff in the other box to the donation to the charity shops or to sell it, you've made yourself some space to put a maybe box in that place, hopefully. And then you can readdress and re-ask yourself those questions in a few months. And it's really, really useful that. Are you holding on to things for the future? Question mark, when in the future? Okay, this is a good one. Firstly, I'm holding on to quite a lot of things in this house for the future. I had a business before and I've got a lot of those things from that business and I'm holding on to them to restart my business in the future. So that doesn't come in the category of what we're trying to declutter. That's like kind of a holding system that I've got for the future. And I have to look at that on a yearly basis and question myself, are you still thinking that this is going to happen in the future? Because in a year, if I then re realise that that's not going to happen, then I can go through all those questions and I can get rid of things. Okay, so they're all most likely maybes. So it's different situations that people have got. This is very hard as there are plans for the future and you are saving things for them that you have bought in advance that's something totally different from this. And maybe it's okay to leave them aside and look again in a year or two. It may be that in a year or two you're still saying the same, but it also may be that you can make a decision on this to declutter some of the items or get rid of them altogether if your plans have changed. So what I want you to do is get some bags and boxes ready and place unwanted items into them and also get that box for the maybe as well. So go through your cupboard, okay, start, look at that item, I definitely want to keep that item. I use it all the time, put it back in the cupboard. Oh, this item, don't always use that. I don't know if I really need it anymore. Put that in the donation bag right now. One more item. I've not used it, but you know, it, it was expensive, but I don't really use it. Okay, let's get that sold. Sell that on a selling platform. Then there's one more item here that I'm not sure about. I do like it. Auntie Sybil gave it me. I could use it at Christmas. So I'm not quite sure. Got a kind of sentimental attachment to it. It might go back in the cupboard and I might ask myself that in another other month or two. Or Auntie Cyril gave it me and I know she doesn't mind if I, if I don't use it. It wasn't something very, very sentimental. So I'm going to actually put it in the maybe box and I'll have a think about that because I'm not quite sure. And then maybe next month I'll look at that maybe box again. And either Auntie Sybil's plate will go back in the cupboard or it'll be donated. So you ask yourself all those series of questions. Do I need it? Have I used it or have I missed it while it's been stored away? The maybe box or things that are in these cupboards that you haven't seen for quite a long time. Have you missed it at all? If you haven't missed it at all, it probably is answering the question that you don't really need it. But if it says, oh gosh, I didn't know, I, I can't remember that. I'm going to use that now. I'm going to use it and, and make use of it. I forgot I haven't even had it. If that's what the reaction you get when you've seen something that you didn't even remember you'd got, then you probably can make a use of it and go and make a use of it. But if you then find that you don't make a use of it, either put it in the maybe box, but most likely it's best to donate it. You'll have an instant reaction if you find something that you forgot about that you can make do with it right now 
And if you're going to make do with it right now because you forgot about it, that's fine because you'll probably use it, yeah? But if when you find it, you think, oh gosh, I forgot about that, but you're still not using it, donate it, sell it, or get it in the maybe box if you really are unsure. That selling on the expensive things, like I said, gives us money back towards the loss and makes it easy to get rid of things, especially when they were expensive originally. So let's get started and create lasting changes and scheduling regular little and often decluttering sessions in your own time so you can get rid of all that stuff. You can donate, you can make, you make some more money and you will certainly be most rewarded. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you can go away now and start on a small project and ask yourself those questions. Do I need it? Do I want it? Why do I want it? Or why do I need it? Has it got sentimental value? to me then I have to keep it or would the person because I'm not using it at all be annoyed with me if I did get rid of it has it cost a lot of money if so if I'm not using it let's sell it and get a bit of money back and that, that's fine that'll help or can I help the charity shops by donating it if I'm very unsure then I'll put it in the maybe box and I'll come back in a month or two and I'll ask those same questions again I hope that's helped you I hope you can go away now and do a little bit of decluttering. Take it easy, you know, don't overwhelm yourself. Make that list and hopefully you'll be able to find a bit more space in your cupboards. If you're going out shopping or you're online shopping, scrolling and around and everything, just ask those few questions for yourself. Do I really need that? You know, will I really use that? Because it might actually save you quite a lot of money. And the money that you save by not buying these things, why not put it in a jar or put it aside or invest it in something, you know, and let it build up a little bit because you'll be surprised over a year how much you might save by not buying those impulsive buys and things that'll probably just be stashed in your cupboard you don't really need. And then you can treat yourself, go and have a pamper yourself, have something special, do something for yourself because you've achieved so much and these things are often so big and an experience for yourself does you the world of good and your mental well-being. Now I'm going to get on with my apron on and get sorting out that cupboard. <laughs> Take care everybody. Thanks for stopping by and I hope you've enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye bye.